And that's just a taste of it. Tonight on Power Play, you'll hear from all three political parties. And of course, our front bench is standing by to weigh and to get us started. I'm joined now live by the government's House Leader, Mark Holland. Mr. Holland, good to have you here with us. Good to be here, Vashi. Thank you very much for making the time. Uh, in those clips off the top of question period, we heard the leader of the Conservatives continually ask uh, the Prime Minister and, and sort of make the assertion that uh, you know, you're out of touch with Canadians and you're helping out your friends like through the McKinsey contracts. I know you're going to refute that claim, but on the question that the leader asked many times, how much is the total value of those contracts? I did not hear a clear answer. Can you tell Canadians listening tonight, is it more than the $101 million that, that is publicly out there right now? Well, look, I think first of all, you have to step back and take a look. Uh, successive governments have used contracting to amplify the work that public service does uh, and to make sure that uh, they're able to deal with uh, the strains that come uh, at different moments in time where that workload goes beyond the capacity of the public service to deal with it. Um, and uh, what has been said is that there's going to be an opportunity to look into um, those contracts, both, uh, and that's happening at committee now uh, with this company that has been, uh, you know, not only with our government for previously. In terms of the exact dollar amount, I'm not, it's not my file, so I'm not, I couldn't give you an immediate answer on that beyond uh, the framework that is you gave. Is it possible that it is open? Is it, that, is it possible rather that it is more than what has been reported so far, though? Well, I, I'm not a person know. who would be knowledgeable enough to be able to give On that your answer. assertion that um, this is something that all governments do, where McKinsey specifically is concerned, I think it's fair to point out to the government that Radio Canada investigated and found that under the previous government it was worth $2.2 .2 million, and now we're at about $101 million for you, your government. On the wider issue, though, of outsourcing, in 2015, when the Liberals were running, you pledged to do a spending review, and in that, reduce the amount of outsourcing that happened. Instead, it's climbed by 74% under your tenure. Is there a problem? Well, I think what what we have to be able to look at is the uh, the outcomes that government is able to generate uh, and what we're able to do in terms of serving Canadians. And there's no question that we have a government that has taken on a very uh, ambitious agenda of being able to expand uh, the ability to help Canadians through very difficult times. Uh, and so with respect to, I'm not the minister with respect to files, so I can't answer that specific question, but I can speak to the this overall... Is, this is across all departments, though. No, no, exactly. I mean, and that's what is happening... No, no, that, so this is what I'm speaking to more broadly, which is that as we respond as an example within the pandemic or as we uh, respond um, with, uh, uh, with programs and services to expand the impact of how we're going to be able to help Canadians, uh, the public service has to be able to respond. And you use the public service to the best of its ability and where it doesn't have the ability to, to, uh, to fill in gaps, either because of the amount of additional workload that is present or because an urgent uh, situation hits like what we have with the pandemic. There are instances where outsourcing needs to occur in order to be able to make the, meet the demands of serving Canadians. And, and I take that point, but it's a big jump, right? So when you say in 2015, we want to reduce it and then it jumps by 70 at the same time as the public service has grown. Is there something like, is it, is it, do you understand how it would be hard for Canadians to, to, to square that circle? Sure. And I think that what, what we've committed to doing is taking a look at uh, what those expenditures were and to measure that against the delivery of service. But there's a couple of things that are really important to note. One is that we uh, we said from the beginning uh, that we needed to make sure that uh, we were there for Canadians and that we expanded the impact of the federal government uh, in Canadians' lives. And that has had a number of, of huge impacts. But Take poverty as an example. And, and I'm not taking away from those impacts, but why does expanding the role of government include expanding the role of private outsourcing. Well, and I think we have to take a look at what what was being done and what was the most efficacious way to do that. Canada has uh, the, the uh, you know, among uh, all world uh, leaders uh, in, uh, you know, in looking at other democracies across the world has the highest standards when it comes to contracting, both in terms of the efficacy of those contracts and also the controls that are placed on them and how, both in how they're awarded and also the sort of performance metrics that come thereafter. And so what we want to make sure is there was good value for money. Uh, at the end of the day, in, in every budget, we outline exactly what we're going to deliver for Canadians in terms of programs and services and helping them uh, in their lives. And uh, we have to make sure that the federal public service is equipped to be able to deal with that. And the question that you're asking, which is a fair one, is, is there good value for money? And was this the most, uh, ex uh, the most appropriate and, and uh, cost effective uh, and most uh, effective way of going about uh, delivering those services? And that's, and that's something that we are in a constant uh, environment of review of. 
of. And we've said with respect to this that through the Treasury Board, we're going to go and look deeper uh, because uh, we want to make sure that, that, that we answer that. Yeah. We understand that with clarity. I, my guess is that Canadians are hoping that question is answered before you endeavor to, to make those contracts. Oh. But but I, I have to move on to one other subject because I, sure. I know your, your time is limited. Uh, and that is around the emergency debate that Mr. Singh is asking for, in particular around what he calls the growing role of the private sector in some provinces into uh, public health care. Uh, he, you know, you can debate the merits of that, but he does make a point around how your government has changed its position. Uh, when you were running against Aaron O'Toole, who proposed the exact same thing Doug Ford is proposing, your government came out with very specific criticisms. The prime minister specifically said it was wading into health care, that you were willing to, that he was willing to look at uh, holding back uh, money through the Canada health transfer because of that. And now he calls it innovation. Why the flip-flop? Well, I think let's start by saying we are 100% committed to publicly funded and available uh, and publicly available health care and that it's it's essential in this country that when you walk into a hospital, the first question that you're the, the first and only question you're asked is how do we make you better, not the size of your wallet. Uh, that is a core value for Canadians. And we've also said, working with the provinces, uh, that we need a health accord that, yes, is going to give them more money, but needs to be tied to specific metrics to demonstrate that we've been improving outcomes for Canadians. And so that's the process we've been moving through. Now, provinces within their jurisdiction are going to have to make decisions about how they deliver that health care. But we have been uh, absolutely clear that the health care that's delivered must be public in nature and must not undermine public health care. And that's something that we have not wavered from. But respectfully, Mr. Holland, that doesn't answer the question of why your position has changed. When Aaron O'Toole proposed what Doug Ford is proposing, the Prime Minister said he said he supports choice in health care, which means letting the wealthiest pay to jump ahead in line. Now, a year and a half later, he calls it innovation. That's not the same position. Well, I don't, I, I mean, you're comparing uh, the position of Mr. O'Toole to what's happening. Um, the pro I think the proposals being made was for more private delivery using public money. That's I the understand same. that. I understand that. But what I'm saying is we are in negotiations right now with the provinces and have been clear in those negotiations the primacy of, of public health care. And we've also been clear uh, then and now that if provinces move away from the public delivery of health care, there will be consequences for that. And there are mechanisms, uh, including the potential, uh, the potential of withholding funds um, that are available to us. So th there has been no change in that whatsoever. Uh, we obviously will continue to monitor the decisions that are made at a provincial level. Those are an evolution. Those are not concrete. There's a lot of discussions that are going on between our level of government and the provinces. But what I just stated is a core and an immovable value for us. Okay, Mr. Holland, I'll leave it there. I'm out of time. Thanks for your time. Appreciate Thanks it. So